So I'm wandering around the house, just looking at the ground. And all of a sudden, I noticed. What is this? What could this be? That is an Intel compute stick right there. Just lying on the ground. So I was like, hey, uh, talking to Joanne, I was like, what are you using this thing for? She's like, well, all kinds of things, but there's a problem. It's a bit slow because it has windows on it. This thing has two gigabytes of RAM. Two gigabytes of RAM is going to get eaten up by the OS pretty quickly. Other than that, you've got HDMI right there on the end. Um, also got, you know, USB. This little box over here breaks out to some more USB. And then we have a micro USB there for power. I think we need to put Linux on this and make it useful. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you guys uh, which version of Linux is best for this and uh, go through some installation steps. So let's get down to it. Everyone say thanks to Ian Morrison. He's awesome. He's always installing Linux and other well, all the various distros and also other OSs on things that they shouldn't go on. Well, maybe they should. Linux should go on everything. Your toaster, it should be install Linux on your kneecaps. You install Windows 95 on an Apple Watch. What the hell? Anyway, this is the Intel Compute Stick. Just go uh, like him on Google Plus or whatever the hell you do on Google Plus. Go plus him. Is that, a, is that now a verb? We have to know another freaking verb because a social network decided so. Anyway, go over to his website. He has compiled several different versions of Ubuntu specifically for the Intel Compute Stick and it'll work with all these models here. So, yes. The one we have is this one, STCK1A32WFC. That's the one we've got. Now you can use Ubuntu if you're a crazy person, whatever. You can use Ubuntu if you want the thing that's the most efficient. It's a very lightweight distro, good for low spec hardware, as they say here. Uh, and then other than that, it's basically just picking the desktop environment. You know, you can start with Ubuntu and, and basically end up in any of these, but this is a nice starting point. GNOME might be a bit heavyweight, but it's pretty. I want to use Ubuntu Mate because this one uh, has GNOME 2, slightly lighter weight maybe than GNOME 3, but I'm really used to it and it's a minimal, sleek desktop, so whatever. There you go. Now, you're gonna need to download this, so go ahead and click on the one you like. Most people should click on this. I'm an idiot, so I clicked on this. And then you can download it, yes. Once you download it, you've got an ISO. You need to burn it. How do you burn it? Well, let's use Rufus. Rufus is what you need to use if you're on Windows. And I always say Rufus like this for some reason. So use Rufus if you're on Windows, and if you're on, uh, you know, Linux, you can just do DD and uh, get it done. All right, so um, got a DD image here. That's all you need to know. Just DD. Don't worry about anything else. That's going to erase the entire thing and write the entire thing. You won't be able to write anything else to it, but, you know, whatever. Then you got to grab your, uh, oh, it's not there. It's looking for a DD image. You just go to all, all files. Hey, there it is. Grab that. It's ready. It's going to do a format. Yeah, everything else looks fine. I'm just going to do FAT32, BIOS, TFS. I guess you could try in TFS. I tried it once and didn't work, but it might work for some of you guys. I don't know. Anyway, when you hit start, it's going to erase the entire disk. Nope, right using DD. There we go. Yes, it will erase everything. Just yes, yes, it's going to destroy the world. Make sure you're not doing this to one of your real hard drives. And uh, we'll see you guys in just a minute. All right, so now we're gonna just go ahead and plug in this memory card. I need to get in there. This is awful, filming this myself. Yes. Now we're gonna plug it up. You're gonna be on the Linux really soon, you dummy. This is a lap dog from Corsair. If you're in the living room, you should have one of these. Also, uh, Rocket has some new thing out that's pretty cool too. Find the one that you like the best. You know what, we're giving out free plugs. This is full of beer, it was full of beer. Get one of these, it's great. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this unit. You want to get back to your keyboard and start spamming F2 so you can get into the uh, the BIOS or the UEFI or whatever they call it. There we go. So come over to configuration. And this thing cuts off the edges, so sorry about that. We got a little bit of uh, over scanning problem with these stupid things. So make sure your SD card is enabled, of course, your USB is enabled and all that. Uh, your operating system, by default, this will typically be set to Windows 8.1 32-bit. Go ahead and switch it up to Ubuntu. This is 14.04, we're installing 16 point whatever, so it'll work just fine. Um, you could try messing around with the UEFI stuff. I'm gonna leave it all alone, disabled. So I've already got Ubuntu installed in here, but we're gonna, just for the sake of argument, going to go ahead and reinstall this. So um, you just wanna come over here and then press minus, make sure it boots from your, um, Sure, one's corresponding to your uh, USB drive. Go ahead and save changes and exit, and it should start the installation process, which is going to take a few minutes. All right, so um, it's really hard to see up there in the top corner because it's all blurry, but you have three options, and um, you can try Ubuntu Mate without installing. I'm going to pick the second option, which is install Ubuntu Mate. There we go. Give it a second. 
it's going to take a while. Uh, one thing about this is that sometimes it can take 30 to 40 seconds before anything will appear on the screen. So be patient and don't run up and run, you know and reset it. It took about actually more than that, like a minute or two for me. All right, see a few things come up on the the corner of the screen up in the top left. Uh, this came up after maybe a minute or two. So after this, it should try to open up uh, the installation process. Be sure to enjoy a delicious beverage while you're doing this, preferably in one of these. Whenever you use a Tech Syndicate uh, mug, you get a plus four to intelligence and a plus two to dexterity after you finish your uh, coffee. Minus two to dexterity, but a plus four to uh, philosophy after you finish your delicious beer. Hey, hey, hey. That's what I like to see. Wi-Fi networks available. So I'm going to go ahead and join a Wi-Fi network. So you may have to like click around up here in the top right corner if you have the same stupid TV overscanning issue. Many TVs, you can go into the menu on the TV and tell it to not do the overscanning nonsense. Yay, I'm now connected. Wi-Fi is a little slow on this thing, so uh, when you're doing some updates, it might make the installation process take a little while. Pick your language, of course. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and download the uh, third-party updates. And I want to install, you know, stuff for Flash and MP3 and all that other stuff. Because this is going to be an entertainment center PC after all. After I've finished with it. I'm mostly going to use it for Steam, so I'm not sure how necessary that is. But anyway, and wait forever. All right, next up, you'll, it'll ask you for your installation type. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to do this. If you have a Windows on here, it's going to say erase Windows and uh, install whatever. You can also install, you know, Ubuntu alongside Windows. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pick erase disk and install Ubuntu, man. I want to erase the entire damn thing. So I'm not going to use any encryption. You can if you want to, if you want to, you know, if you're in an unsecure environment or whatever, if you just peace of mind, you can do that. All right. So yes, erase the entire disk and install it. See all my settings that I set up earlier. Oh no. And this will take another year. Yep, it'll confirm that this is what you're doing, formatting the entire damn thing. Of course. Destroying all data on there. So if you had Windows on there with some data, or another version of Linux on there with some data, see ya. Pick your time zone. Greenland. That's so, so Los Angeles is everywhere except for Vancouver. I find I'm in Los Angeles. The entire West Coast is Los Angeles. All right. Hey, you can put it in Dvorak if you want to. What's up, Cole Mac? My name. How about it? Hi, I'm Tech Stick. Delicious Tech Stick. You guys can do whatever you want there. These options are whatever. Now we wait. And it's going to start downloading stuff. Could take an hour or more to download everything. So just wait. Oh, that's magical. Time to restart. Now after you restart, it could take a little while. So just uh, wait and then the desktop will appear. You can go ahead and remove your SD card after it uh, shuts down. Moment of truth. We've got something here. There we are. Now you just gotta wait. Uh, sometimes it takes a minute for the uh, USB to initialize, so. And I usually like to get the Synaptic Packet Manager almost immediately, oh yes. All right, so now that we're into the OS, we've got some overscanning problems here. Now you can fix that normally if you have, uh, you know, an ATI or an NVIDIA graphics card, but since we don't, we've got to kind of go up here and try to figure out where all of our applications and everything are. There they are. So I'm going to go down to System Tools and open up my terminal. And the next server has something called the X Render. X. So what you need to do is you need to figure out what your input is, and then you can configure that input. So X R A N D R and the space dash Q will tell you all of your different outputs and stuff. And it says, hey, look, HDMI 1 is connected. So now you know we need to configure HDMI 1. There's a bit of code here I'll paste, this code uh, on the website. So xrender-output, you're naming your output, HDMI 1, then you want to transform it. And you may have to play with these numbers. These are the, you know, positions and also sizes. I'm going to try this one and see what happens. Hey, that worked. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it still cuts off a little bit. Maybe I can, maybe you, need to, you can come and try it again. Paste, let's try negative 40, negative 20. I've ruined it, nope. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, that's nice. So now you'll notice that the uh, the start button or the super key does nothing. So I'm gonna come up here and I need to go down to my system tools and go down to the uh, deconf editor, D-C-O-N-F editor. Now I want to go to org, Mate, macro, that's it. And then global key bindings, yay. 
and you want to find your uh, panel main menu and you want to change this from alt f4 to super underscore l hey look at that when you hit start it appears and then doesn't disappear though until you click somewhere else now also this is going to screw up any shortcuts you have that have to do with the super key so only do this if you must i kind of use the super button um, here and there this is not a mandatory thing but for someone coming from windows you may want this or you may want may not uh, i'm just probably going to use alt f1 for 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 me so all right next up let's install steam so you're going to need to add a repository and uh, this one uh, is called multiverse so it's just sudo apt dash add dash repository space multiverse and it's already enabled so you didn't really need to do that but hey it's there so then you just do um, up update as soon as it's done doing the update we'll do sudo apt get install steam and it should be easy enough all right then it's sudo sudo apt get install steam and yes there we go Okay, that's done, and I changed my wallpaper to something appropriate. You should see it right under Games. There it is, Steam. I'm going to throw it up here, right there. Let's uh, open this up. Oh, it's going to update. That'll take an hour. Well, we'll open it up and get in, get in uh, logged in, and then I'll show you how streaming works. So the um, experience with Morrowind is average. Probably, probably playable. Uh, a game like Doom or something with uh, this Wi-Fi connection is not so hot as far as uh, the Wi-Fi goes. It'd be good for a game like Life is Strange. Um, what else would be good for? Oh, The Wolf Among Us, yes. It'd be great for this game. It's streaming okay. Not amazing, but, uh, you know. There you go. Playing it right here. Thanks to this little guy right here. So that's uh, Linux. Guys, let me know what programs you're installing on your copy of Linux when you first get it installed. Especially if it's like for the, you know, the living room or as a media center or something like that. I'm just curious because I don't really use TVs. This is the first time I've used a TV in maybe 20 years. So let me know what you would put on your copy of Linux for the living room. Throw it in the comments on the website and I'll see you guys over there. All right, playing some Morrowind here. Yes, let's get some action going. I'm going to kill this guy. How about some of that? All right, let's use this for what it was really meant for. Not hitting this guy in the crotch. Yes! Crotch death! How many hits can this guy take to the crotch? <laughs> he killed me.